Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, sports and performance nutritionist, and today we're talking about race day nutrition. This is a two-part series, and this is part one of that series, as we talk about the lead into your race, so that week of and then the day before where you do your carbohydrate load. A race or event can be won or lost in that lead up. So it's really important that we focus and understand what we're doing while we're preparing for that race. So what we're really looking at is all these events where you're doing marathon, ultra marathon, big bike races, audaxes, multi-day events, things that are lasting more than four hours really, maybe longer than three. Anything below that, like two, two and a half hours um, and less, is not going to be hard enough or long enough where a carb load is going to be really appropriate. But some of this other stuff may help. So to go into it, let's start with that lead in. So the first thing you want to do is start a low fiber diet. Now a low fiber diet is 15 grams of fiber or less. And now what this is gonna really do is gonna really empty out your bowels, empty out your digestive tract. And one, it's gonna make you lighter. About three to four days of low fiber diet will drop you around one kilo. Though obviously it does depend on your total size and body mass. Now that weight is one, going to be useful if you're doing endurance sport but two it's just going to empty you out it's going to reduce your risk of GI distress now if you are an individual who has a lot of GI distress you have a lot of issues when you're racing or you know just important rides or important runs then following a low fiber diet may help you with that especially with the lead into maybe training rides or runs but towards an event three to four days low fiber diet does really help now, what you can also do in three to five days in the lead in is also start loading nitrates. I've done another video on this, so you can hit that link in the corner and check that video out as a talk about nitrates. But if you are an intermediate to an advanced athlete, rider, runner, taking 400 milligrams twice a day, for three to five days can improve your performance above and beyond just taking it the morning of or a couple of hours before. It is inexpensive and I think it is worthwhile if you are very competitive and it's an important race for you. So this leads us in really nicely to our carb load. You know, we've done our low fiber diet, we've run through, you know, nitrates. There are a couple of things that you can do in the lead into a race or an event that can really help you. But carbohydrate loading is where it's really at. How much do you need and all these other things come down to my 10 top tips on how you can carb load. Number one, eating high GI. GI in this case means glycemic index. And in everyday life, it doesn't have as big of importance, but when we're looking at carbohydrate loading and storing as much muscle glycogen as we can, when we compare the same amount of food, so let's say 500 grams of carbs, that if we have high GI to low GI, we store way more of high GI to low GI even if it's the same amount of food. And when the whole purpose of this day is to store as much muscle glycogen as we can, then having that high GI option is gonna be more beneficial. Point two, plan your day. Make sure you're prepared for the day that you're gonna be having and eating, so you know what foods you're having and how much you're having, which is the next part in the same point, is that you need to be having between nine and 11 grams per kilogram body weight of carbohydrate. If you're having a full day's rest the day before your event, race, and so on, then more towards that nine will probably be better. But if you like to have some openers or go for like an hour run or spin, something like this, just to loosen the legs off, then going more for your 10 to 11 is probably gonna be more applicable to you. Point three, have liquids as well as solids. Liquids are a great way for you to get carbohydrate content into your day without having to eat it. Eating food really fills you up a lot more and it will have some level of fiber anyway. So having liquids like a two liter bottle of water with your maltodextrin in it of let's say 100 grams that you can sip on all through your day is gonna really help you in achieving your total daily amount without really making you feel any fuller. It's also gonna hydrate you and it's gonna be beneficial. Point four, start your day big. The last thing you wanna do, 
and this kind of comes in with planning it as well, is that you don't want to go normal breakfast, normal lunch, get to dinner, oh crap, I've got to eat so much food, you bang it all in, and then you feel bloated, you feel heavy, you couldn't even get it all, and then in the morning you feel really heavy and bloated again, and that's not what you're looking for. Spread it through the whole day, make it easier on yourself. Start with a good breakfast, a good lunch, and then a good dinner with a few snacks and some drinks with all of them. It makes it a lot easier for you and you'll find it will go down a lot better. Point five, no red meat. Red meat takes ages to digest and go through our digestive tract. And we're really making a big push to empty it out. We've done a low fiber diet and you don't wanna be filling it up with red meat that's still gonna be sitting in you the next day. And this follows on with point six, low fiber. Even if you're having a huge amount of carbohydrate, it doesn't mean we need to be getting loads of fiber again. Remember, this is a performance enhancing day of eating. You're focusing your food around performing better. It's not your everyday eating. We need loads of veggies and loads of greens. Some veggies, yes, sure, have them, but I'm not saying don't, but I'm not saying that fiber and their importance right now isn't paramount. This leads on really nicely to point seven, where we wanna look at density over volume. So if we have our bowl of rice here, that's 100 grams, we don't need to go, here's another 100 grams. Now, what we can do instead is have some honey and soy sauce or something where you can put a glaze onto your food, onto your meat, a sweet soy sauce into your rice to add carbohydrate content without adding volume. This way, you're gonna be able to increase that carbohydrate content without having to add more food. Point eight, eat foods you know. As mentioned earlier, it can be a real blunder that you're going to a different country, the race is just somewhere else, and you rock up, you're there and you're like, that's carb load, and then you have all these different foods that you never have, or you haven't had in a while, ice cream, pizza, different pastas that you're not used to, and next thing you know, you feel bloated, you feel a bit unwell, and maybe even get a bit sick. Don't need to blow all those months of training just because you messed up your carb load. Pick foods you know and make sure that the things that you have regularly, things like rice, porridge, fruits, things like this that you know are gonna be fine for you. If you are in a country like Southeast Asia doing a race, don't go for ice cream, don't get ice in your water, stuff like this. Simple things that you can do that can improve performance. Nine, protein near enough stays the same. We're obviously having a huge amount of calories and we're not in a calorie deficit. So making sure we're getting the minimum amount of protein to make sure we're recovering and muscle recovery is there is all we really need. So 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight will be more than enough over this day. And this leads us on to point 10, fat. We don't need a huge amount of it. So we wanna reduce our fat intake through the day. Once again, we're gonna be increasing our calories quite high with loads of carbohydrate. And carbohydrate doesn't get stored as fat. If anything, it's gonna go into your muscle and be stored as muscle glycogen, which is what we're wanting. Whereas fat gets stored as fat. It doesn't get stored as muscle glycogen. So there's a really great paper that looks at de novo lipogenesis, which is about the conversion of carbohydrate and overconsuming on carbohydrate, they have up to, I think, 950 and 1,000 grams of carbohydrates a day, and they were only walking twice a day. And after three days, they only started gaining body fat. So it's important to know that just because you're eating loads of carbs doesn't mean you're gaining fat. You're not. But if you eat lots of fat with your foods and you're picking poor food choices, like you're having loads of pastries, which aren't even that high GI, it's not even that many carbs in it, but there's a lot of fat in it. It's gonna to add to your day. It's gonna make you feel heavy and it's gonna potentially cause you to gain some body fat because you're having so much fat. Which once again comes back to our point two, plan your day, make sure it's not high in fat, make sure you're hitting your carb content, make sure your fiber isn't too high. So that is my 10 top tips for how you can do your carbohydrate load. If you really enjoyed that and there were some tips that really stood out for you, drop a comment down below. I'd love to know which ones you found most interesting that maybe you didn't know about. And as always, if you liked today's video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button so you can tune in for more videos as we talk about nutrition, science, and things that can help you in your training and what you're doing. 
And as always, fuel for the work required. I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.